Have you ever wondered what the best-selling books of all time are? And why are they the best-selling books of all time? I got you covered. Sitting at number 10, just barely making the list, is She, A History of Adventure. Never heard of it? Yeah, me neither. But as of 1965, 83 million other people have. It was an immediate success upon its release, and it has never been out of print since. This is a novel that follows two explorers as they discover a lost kingdom in the heart of Africa. And the white queen Aisha who reigns there is the all-powerful She, or She Who Must Not Be Named. Wait, that's Harry Potter. She Who Must Be Obeyed. It is considered one of the most influential books in the fantasy genre. Rudyard Kipling, Henry Miller, J.R.R. Tolkien, and Margaret Atwood have all said that this book has influenced their writing. Aisha became the prototype for female antagonists in modern fantasy literature, like the White Witch in the Chronicles of Narnia or Daenerys Targaryen in Game of Thrones. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis sits at number 9 on the list with 85 million copies sold. It is, of course, the first book in the eventual seven-book series called The Chronicles of Narnia. It follows four kids evacuated to England during World War II, and they discover a magical wardrobe that takes them to Narnia. C.S. Lewis absolutely loved the 43 illustrations that made it into the British edition of this book, but when it came to the U.S., many of those illustrations were cut out or severely cropped until 17 poorly rendered images remained. Thus, the U.S. readers had a vastly different reading experience. Later, all of the illustrations were returned to the book, but they're still in pretty low quality in comparison to the originals. Number eight is Dream of the Red Chamber, written by Cao Shuiqin in the 18th century and selling 100 million copies. It is considered one of the four great classical novels of Chinese literature. It is virtually unknown in the West, perhaps because it was not successfully translated to English until 1973. Literary critic Anthony West said this novel is to the Chinese what Proust is to the French and what Karamazov is to the Russians. The novel is an 18th century saga that follows a noble family and their rise and fall from grace. Everyone in China knows it, and this could partly be due to a 1987 TV series that became very popular. One thing that might also make this novel popular is its mystery and intrigue. Although Cao wrote 80 chapters, he died before finishing the book, at which point Gao Yi came in and wrote the 40 remaining chapters, claiming that he knew exactly what Cao wished and he acted only as an editor. But some believe Gao Yi might not have even written the final 40 chapters. And because people think this ending is so unsatisfying and Cao never would have written it, many alternative endings have popped up just adding to the confusion of this novel. To this day, people in China are so obsessed with this novel and figuring out who wrote the ending and what the ending is supposed to be that there is an entire field of business around it called Redology. There are numerous lectures, seminars, forums, and magazines. I would tell you to pick it up, but there are 400 characters and it is over 2,500 pages, which is twice as long as War and Peace. So maybe just watch the show. The Hobbit falls at number seven with somewhere around 100 million copies sold. Inspiration struck Tolkien when he was marking school certificate papers and he came upon a blank page. On it, he wrote, In a hole in the ground, there lived a hobbit. And so the hobbit was born. Which we all know the story of. It's about Bilbo Baggins and Gandalf and dwarves and stuff. Actually, I don't really know the story of The Hobbit, but I'm guessing you probably do. It was popular immediately upon its release in 1937 and has since won many, many awards and has become one of the most popular franchises ever. In fact, it was so popular that the publisher promptly asked for a sequel, which is how Lord of the Rings was born. And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie is sixth on the list with 100 million copies sold, but it is actually the number one best-selling crime novel of all time. It was originally published under a much more nefarious title in the UK in 1939, but even then, that was a little too racist for America. So when it published here in 1940, they changed it to And Then There Were None. The UK continued to use that original title all the way until 1985, which I just think is an insanely lo long time to use that incredibly racist title. Title aside, this novel is very highly regarded among critics and mystery aficionados. It has a tight plot, no extraneous scenes, characters, or clues, and it also has no red herrings. Agatha Christie said herself, it was clear, straightforward, baffling, and yet had a perfectly reasonable explanation. I don't say it is the play or book of mine that I like the best, or even that I think it is my best, but I do think in some ways that it is a better piece of craftsmanship than anything else I have written. Number five is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone or Philosopher's Stone. Depending on where you reside, I would venture to guess that eventually this book will be number one, but it was only published in 1997, which is by far the most recently published book on this list. And I am actually sure everyone knows the plot of this one. You've also probably heard the story of J.K. 
Rowling no less than 100 times, but let's recap it anyways. She had no money, she wrote the book, she got rejected by a whole slew of publishers. Part of the reason is because it was way too long at 90,000 words. And then a Bloomsbury chief executive gave it to his eight-year-old daughter who could not put it down, demanded more, and so he picked it up, giving Rowling a whopping 2,500 euro advance and an initial print run of a whopping 500 copies. And actually JK was not even supposed to be JK. She was going to publish under her name Joe, which is short for Joanne. But the Bloomsbury chief executive said, and I'm paraphrasing here, this book sounds like a boy's book and boys prefer books written by male authors. So change your name. And so she used JK. The Little Prince comes in at number four with around 142 million copies sold. This is the second most translated book ever only to be surpassed by the Bible. It has been translated into over 300 languages. The story of this little book is kind of crazy. Saint Exupéry, the author, flew as a reserve military pilot in the French Air Force during World War II until France's defeat in 1940. He then moved to the US in exile, his books were banned in France, and he wrote The Little Prince while lonely in New York. Even though it presents as a children's book about an aviator who flies around to different planets, it makes many philosophical observations about life, loneliness, love, and loss. It was published in the US in French and English and then published posthumously in France in 1943. Posthumously, you might ask? Why yes, in 1943, he left New York to rejoin his squadron in North Africa. A year later, his plane went down somewhere over the Mediterranean. Oddly enough, in 1998, 55 years after his death, a fisherman in Marseille caught his identification bracelet in their fisherman's net. They subsequently were able to find the place where his plane went down, but they didn't find a body and they also did not find a cause of death. Clocking in at number three is Lord of the Rings with 155 million copies sold. Tolkien set out to write The New Hobbit in December of 1937 amidst pressure from his publishers for a sequel to The Hobbit. Even though this was the same year that The Hobbit was published, Lord of the Rings wouldn't be published until 17 years later. Tolkien was writing in his spare time while teaching but also dealing with paper shortages during World War II. After 10 years, Tolkien had finished the book, but his publishers balked at the length. It was like 1200 pages. They had expected a sequel to The Hobbit, but this was its own thing. So it took another seven years to find a publisher and when he did finally find one, they did not want to publish it as a single edition, which is how Lord of the Rings became a trilogy. Printing it in three volumes minimized the risk for the publishers and allowed them to cut costs on the printing. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times, and this book comes in not quite at the best, but pretty darn close at number two. And that is A Tale of Two Cities with 200 million copies sold. This book was published in 1859 and written by Charles Dickens, and it is set in London and Paris before the French Revolution. It was initially published in 31 installations in Charles Dickens's, Dickens's literary periodical called All Year Round. In perhaps one of my favorite quotes ever, James Fitzjames Stephen called this piece of work a dish of puppy pie and stewed cat that is not disguised by the cooking. I guess it's safe to say he didn't like it. Before I reveal number one, I'm gonna sell you something. Just kidding, I have nothing to sell. But I do know people are gonna come at me and be like, but Melanie, what about the Bible? And I did not include religious texts intentionally on this list because number one, they are very difficult to measure because there so many copies are given away by churches and governments. And two, they have been printed over such a long period of time by so many different publishers, many of them unreported, that it's really difficult to tell exactly how many copies have been sold. So we're just gonna leave it alone, but just know that the Quran, the Bible, quotations of Mao Zedong would all top this list. The number one best-selling book of all time is Don Quixote with a whopping 500 million copies sold. Are you surprised? Because I, I kind of was. But when you consider it came out in 1605, that starts to make a little more sense. And according to Wikipedia, it is often labeled as the first modern novel and a founding work of Western literature. Take that into consideration, along with the fact that it's been translated into 145 languages, making it the sixth most translated book ever. And now I can start to see why it's the best-selling book of all time. Nigerian author Ben Okri said, if there is one novel you should read before you die, it is Don Quixote. Don Quixote has the most wonderful and elaborated story, yet it is simple. I guess I know what I should read next. And you should too, in fact, get to it if you haven't. Or you could watch another video about books instead of reading them.